So I'm going to try and capture with cap, capture the net cap packets. So I'll start TCP dump. Start the capture and then on computer 14 start a server. Listen on port one, two, three, four, five, and then start my client. Connect to the computer fourteen, port one, two, three, four, five. Send my messages. And now we'll see that in the capture. So I just sent some packets between computer 1 and 14, stop my capture, and now open that in Wireshark and have a look. And remember it's useful to disable name resolution. Then you won't see the nicknames, you'll see the raw addresses. And I see there are a lot of packets. Let's try and find. How do I filter on packets? There are different ways to filter. Port numbers can be filtered. IP addresses. Protocols. So it's the, the slides show some different filters that you can use. All right, so you can filter by protocol if you know the IP address. Uh, TCP has its uh, port number. TCP dot port equals one two three four five because I know I listened on port one two three four five so that's one way and I find these packets and I'll just turn off color coding here the time let's hide that for now even the source and destination. So computer 1 is me, computer 14 was the other computer running the Netcat server. So the first message is sent from me to the server and then back. What are these messages? Well we see the first three, me to the server, back, and then a third one from me to the server. These are TCP messages, and the way that TCP works is before we send any data, we set up a connection. We synchronize the two endpoints. And the way to synchronize two endpoints in TCP is to send some synchronized packets. So they're TCP segments, but there's a flag set called SYN to synchronize. So the way that it normally works is that I send something to the server saying, I want to synchronize with you the first sin. The server sends back an act saying OK and the server also sends a synchronized message to me and it combines them together into one packet. That's why we have a sin and an act together. And the third one is this, me sending the server acknowledging its sin message. Roughly we can try and draw that. If we try and draw that on the screen, if I can get it to work. There's me and computer 14. This is our message sequence diagram. And the first message is the SYN message sent from computer 1 to computer 14. So this is what we're going to draw is called the message sequence diagram, try to capture the messages. And then there's the SYN act that comes back. And then the third act.
this is TCP setting up the connection. So the way that TCP works is before we send data, we set up a connection. And the typical way is SYN, SYNAC, ACK. They're trying to synchronize sequence numbers and synchronize the two entities so they're ready for data transfer. From my computer 1 to 14. You should write the IP address here to be more precise. Okay, so I've just written the computer number. Then the next message... We see I send something to com the server, computer 14. What do I send? In TCP, it's called a push message. And push usually means it contains data. It's saying, here's some data. Give it, push it to the application at the other side as soon as possible. And if we look inside that one message, the fourth one here, we actually see the data. Down the bottom we see it contains the word that I typed in, the words I typed in, so hello Steve. So this is the data message coming from client to server and then the next one is an ACK. There's no data in this one, it's just an ACK saying thanks for the data. So we could draw that. So the fourth message... is the data. And then there's an act that comes back. So I don't write PSH comma act because what it really means to me it's data. And the data was whatever the message I typed in. And there's some more messages after that. I could draw them if I like. Depends how many you sent. But that's that's the important parts of what we see in that message transfer. We see a connection set up and then the data transfer. And that keeps going. If you're lucky, you may see a connection close at the end. You may see some fin segments to finish the connection, but you may not see them. So this is what we call a message sequence diagram, and I'd like you to draw them for each time we ask you to capture packets, so for each of the three tasks today. Don't draw things that you don't understand. That is, don't write names here which are exactly like on Wireshark. Interpret to what it really means, or simplify it. So I don't write PSH, comma, ACK, I just write data because I know it's really the data. Okay. And the next one's the act. I could add up more details, but that's enough in the context of this question. You could add sequence numbers if you like, but that's sufficient to see the types of messages. Then the other type of diagram is to draw maybe one or two of the packets in detail. Let's say focus on the data packet. Let's look, zoom in on that one data packet and try and draw that. This one data packet is this fourth one in my capture. If I double click, it shows me the details of that one data packet. And the way to interpret the Wireshark information, note these rows here. That tells us the, the basic structure of the packet or a frame is a more precise name. The entire frame is 78 bytes long. The frame is made up of an Ethernet header, an IP header, a TCP header, and 12 bytes of data. So if I want to draw this frame, I would try and illustrate that there's an Ethernet header, an IP header, TCP, and data. Let's try and draw that and quite simply just illustrate it as a, a packet diagram. And you've seen in lectures how we draw this. A, some form of rectangle. To illustrate that one packet. And what do we have? Split it into four chunks. It doesn't have to be to scale. There's an Ethernet header. 
if I can get this to spell correctly. Ethernet, IP, what was next? TCP, and then the data. And all of this was our one large frame. Total size. How big was the Ethernet header? So that's my frame. That's how I say to draw the packet diagram. Identify the headers. And the other useful thing is the size of each. And it's easy to see the size when you click on, on one of the rows. And I'll go back to the main window in Wireshark. When I click on the Ethernet row, if you look down the bottom in the status bar, it shows you the size of that Ethernet header, 14 bytes. IP, right down the bottom, 20 bytes. TCP, 32 bytes. Data, 12. So we write the sizes on the packet as well. So the total frame size, 78 bytes, when we select it, or we see here, captured 78 bytes, that's the entire frame, but it's split into an Ethernet header, IP, TCP, data. So that's how we can visualize it. The entire frame is 78 bytes, the individual headers or the chunks are, are listed there. So that's the basic way to draw a packet diagram. Sometimes it's useful to add a few details. What's inside the headers? In Wireshark, what's inside the headers is shown when we again zoom in on a particular packet. We can expand and see the Ethernet header contains a destination address, source, and the type IP packet. The IP header contains a number of different fields including source and destination. TCP, sequence numbers, act numbers, flags, port numbers and the data, well the data is just the data that I sent. So sometimes it's useful on the packet diagram to draw the values of important fields. Maybe the addresses are useful. For example, I can draw the, the source and destination IP addresses. Now you don't need to draw all fields on the packet and sometimes you can get away with drawing none. But some, sometimes if there's a key value of importance, highlight it on your diagram. Addresses are usually important, port numbers. Sometimes there's a particular field in a question that, that uh, will arise. So whenever you capture whenever we give you tasks of capturing, draw these two types of diagrams. You don't need to draw every packet, maybe the main ones, like I ch chose the data packet. The ACT packet's not very interesting, the data's of interest. And in the frame exchange, the message sequence diagram, you don't have to draw every single packet captured. Again, just select the main ones, or 
sample of the main ones. So that's your task for today. The first, so you draw a message sequence diagram, a packet diagram. There are better drawn ones there. You should have captured with NC. You should quickly try, even if you don't capture, try to use NC in UDP mode. All right, try to use NC in UDP mode. You don't need to capture it. Then we'll have a break, and then at 2.40, you can continue on with task two and three. So just get, uh, keep going with them. Task two is to use ping, capture, look in Wireshark, answer some questions. Task three, access a website while capturing, look in Wireshark, answer some questions. With the aim of learning about how to use Wireshark and TCP dump today.